Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and I'm so excited that you guys decided to draw with me again today. Today's animal is really, really colorful and you guys know how much I like the color, so... Okay, let me give you a few hints as to what our animal is that we're gonna be drawing today. This animal is amongst the smallest birds in the world. They can fly upside down and a flock of these is called a charm. You know what it is? Yep, you got it. We are drawing a hummingbird today. So let's make sure we have everything we need to get started. All right, so make sure you guys have a nice clean sheet of paper. We'll need a sharpened pencil with an eraser because we do our sketching. We're gonna need to erase that sketch after we've done our outlines with a nice uh, dark pen or marker. And then at the very end, we're gonna do some coloring. And I'm gonna use these markers right here. You can use whatever you want, um, but we're gonna need some colors because it's a very, very colorful bird and it's gonna be a lot of fun to do. So make sure you get all that out and uh, let's start with our sketch. All right, so let's start with a little diagonal line right here. There we go. And we're gonna do kind of like just a half a circle for the belly of our bird, of our hummingbird. Okay, so now that we have that, let's draw our circle for the head of our little hummingbird. So I'm gonna move this maybe right up here. Just draw a circle right here on the edge there. That looks about right. Okay, now let's do, maybe let's fit in the, the tail. Now, normally if you look at a hummingbird from the side when they're flying, you'll just kind of see something like this. Something like that, because their tail kind of fans out. So you're not gonna see the big fan of the tail, but because we're the artists and we're drawing this ourselves, we're not taking a photo of it, we're gonna kind of pretend you could see them at this angle. And we're gonna add some right here, but first let's do like a little, uh, let's just round this off right here. Round that off and just take off that sharp corner. And then from the corners of those, where we started rounding it off, we're just gonna go, we're just gonna do one little line and another little line right down here. And then from, I'm gonna do a couple other lines coming out of here. Maybe a few more, maybe I didn't do enough. So maybe we'll do another line right there and another line right there. There we go. Cause at the very end of their tail, I can kind of just connect them like this. Makes it easier to draw those. You see that? All right. Let's see how this works. Let's start doing the wings and the beak so that we can kind of figure out the full picture here. And then we'll do all of our details. All right, so let's do a wing, but let's kind of start it right about, right about here. We'll start the, the wing that's in the front. Let's have it kind of go back to here. We're just gonna have it arc right here. Their wings are super cool. They, they flap so fast, so, so fast. Let's move that down a little bit. It looked, didn't look thick enough. They can go up to, it can flap 80 times in one second. And that's actually why we call them hummingbirds because their wings move so fast that it sounds like they're actually humming. Isn't that crazy? And when you're looking at them, I mean, we're drawing them as if we could see it as they're just standing still. But these things move so fast, 80 times a second, you wouldn't be able to see it. It looks just like a blur. You don't ever see their wings when they're flying. They're just too fast to see. That's why when they have to take photos of them, they can stop it and you can see what their wings look like. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good with the wings. They got some interesting looking wings. They almost look like uh, shark fins <laughs> over here. All right, so let's maybe connect this before we go to the beak because I think that needs to happen <laughs> sooner than later. All right, so I'm gonna kind of just connect this part with the, the neck here. So the neck going down to the chest, I mean, of our bird. But then their head kind of goes like this. So we're gonna kind of follow, let's follow the circle we've already made. And then we're just gonna go out like this and draw a really long beak. We're gonna go up here and they have a really thin little beak like that. Really, really thin. And you can kind of exaggerate it, make it longer or thinner. You can even just be a line if you want. They are very, very small. But I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do mine like that. And then what I'll do immediately is, is erase all of this circle that's on the inside because I don't wanna get mixed up when I'm doing my inking with my marker. There you go. 
So why do they even have that long beak? Do you know? Well, it's actually because when they, they have a little tongue that comes out of that beak, but they have a long beak because they want to reach into flowers. So that's what they hover, which is also crazy because birds don't, most birds can't hover. I don't know any other bird that actually can hover, which means they're just going to stay in one place beating their wings and not moving. They can go backwards, they can go upside down, all that kind of stuff is no other birds can do that. So the fact that they can do that is really nice because they need to just hover over a flower and they can stick their long beak in there and they have a little tongue that goes out and takes out the nectar or the sweet liquid that's in the flowers. And that's what they eat. All right, that's looking like a hummingbird, I think. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do this because now there's lots, there's over 300 different types of species of hummingbirds. So I'm not gonna, so again, like we've done with other animals, we can just draw how we want. You know, we just know that there's lots of different colors, really bright colors that they come in. So we can kind of take our own creative liberties and do whatever colors we want or whatever markings we want on our bird. Everybody's gonna know this is a hummingbird because of how those wings are shaped and this little long, this little thin beak. But for this one, I might do more of the traditional markings of like a ruby-throated hummingbird. So they have this really ruby red color right here on their neck and I really like how it looks. So I'm gonna kind of leave some area right there for that. Um, but let's add the eye. That's another thing we can do here. I'm gonna do an eyeball right here. Maybe right about here. Now on a hummingbird, you're not going to see any pupil, which means you're not going to see any of the, uh, you're only going to see the pupil, actually. You're not going to see any of the white uh, around your eyes. But because we're making a friendly character, <laughs> we, can do, we, can, we can do that. We can just add just the pupil inside. Then we'll make it big so it looks friendly. Um, but there's not, they usually don't have that white around the eyes. So if you just want to make it black, that's totally fine, too. And they... The one I'm going to draw, I'm going to have some little extra markings on here. You don't have to do this. I'm going to add just a few little markings around the eyes like this, like almost like a little teardrop shape around the eye, and I'll color those different colors um, just because I like the markings on, on, the, on that type of hummingbird. So do what you'd like to do. Uh, before we go, maybe how about on the wings? They have, let's add a little bit of a structure to this wing. There we go. Let's do this. Little, so this is just a little wave pattern right here. Just a little wave pattern. Just to give it, it has different feathers right up here than it has on the main part, those long feathers. So we'll do another one maybe right in here. We're just giving ourselves now some more opportunities to color in our hummingbird, which is gonna be fun. And then from there, go ahead and just draw some lines just to show that this hummingbird's got lots and lots of little feathers that are stacked together to make the wings. Have you guys ever seen a hummingbird around your house? I've seen a bunch of hummingbirds and you can actually attract hummingbirds to your house. They have hummingbird feeders and they have certain types of sweet liquid that you can put in them that they like. Um, but the real thing, the real reason why they come to the feeders that you put up is because of the color. They can't really smell. Actually, I don't think they can smell at all. Um, but they have really good eyesight. And uh, they actually prefer different colored flowers, brightly colored flowers. So if your feeder is like a bright red or a bright pink, for example, you'll get like a ruby-throated hummingbird coming over to yours probably because that's what they like. That's the color they like. Not because they smell the sweet, it's because they can see it. Alrighty, okay, so I, I can keep going on here. Maybe I'll do right here, if you want to follow along and draw the same thing I am. At this point, you can start doing, you can look at some pictures or you can make up what your hummingbird looks like and add your own patterns. Uh, I'll just draw this one last bit with you so that you can see what I'm going to do and the rest I'll probably do just with my coloring. But on the ruby-throated ones, they have almost like little scales right here, it looks like. Their feathers are really shaped like scales. So I'm gonna kinda of do that pattern and I'm gonna kinda of do a bunch of those right here all the way up to the top here. And I'll try to connect those however I can. There we go. 
I'll try to start it right there. There's not a real, <laughs> I'm getting kind of messy now. But all right, we kind of get the idea. I think that's what I'm gonna do. It kind of looks like scales underneath there. And then if you wanna add more little patterns right here for their, for their bellies, that would be kind of cool. Just to show that they have some feathers on their body. I'll do a few. And if you wanna add legs, now I'm gonna add a tiny little, I'll just draw one little, little foot here. They have tiny little cute legs um, that are not very strong so that you won't see them walking around and hopping around, they don't do that. They'll fly around, but they'll also uh, kind of shuffle, and that's about all they can do with those little feet of theirs. All right, so I think we're finished here with our sketch. The only thing we're missing is probably a nice big flower over here that our hummingbird is dipping its beak into. And I'm gonna let you do that. I'm not gonna do one on here. I want you to go ahead and pick whatever flower you want. Maybe it's a made up flower. And then I'd love to see it. So you guys have been great at sharing your work with me, but make sure you just let your parents know and just have them take a picture of whatever you make. And then they can either email it to us or they can go to Brave Kids Art Club on Instagram and they can just tag us at Brave Kids Art Club and uh, I'll get a chance to see it and see what your flowers look like. That'd be really, really cool. So have fun with that. And uh, I say now I'm at the point where I'm comfortable with my sketch and how it all looks that I'm gonna go right to my outlining with my permanent pen here. I'm gonna start drawing in my lines. All right. So this drawing is actually a lot bigger than what an actual hummingbird looks like. Isn't that crazy? They're that small. They are so, so tiny. I've got to be careful here. I'm talking and trying to draw a straight little line over here. So let me draw this first and then I'll continue talking. Ooh, this makes me nervous. I guess I'm gonna color this black anyways, so I'm not too worried, but just a little worried about getting that, messing that up. If I mess up, it's all right. I try to avoid it, <laughs> obviously, if I can, but it's all right if I mess up a little bit. No one else is gonna know. I'll just say that's what I meant to do. <laughs> As an artist, you can say those kind of things. That's what I was meaning to do. I meant for that hummingbird to have three wings. Okay, so yeah, the hummingbirds themselves are really, really, really small. This is way bigger than what an actual hummingbird is. They're usually three to five inches. And some of them, which is the, actually the smallest bird in the world is a bee hummingbird. And it is like super tiny. I wanna say it's like a couple inches. It's just really, really, really small. But most of these hummingbirds are about three to five inches, which is what, about that big? Just little guys, just little, little birds. I'm gonna draw those little lines in for the wings. I mean, not for the wings, for the tail feathers. Yeah, I'm glad we're showing off the tail feathers. That's why, you know, I love photography. Photography is awesome and it's an art form too. Um, but the reason why I like illustrating is because I feel like I can take even more creative liberties and uh, make something look exactly how I want it to look. That's one of the biggest reasons why I like creating and becoming an ill and I became an illustrator. It's because I get to have kind of, I kind of get to just show what I'm seeing in my head or how I think it should look or try to show, show something off in a way that nobody's ever seen before. I think that's what's kind of cool about you making artwork is that no one's seen it before. Whatever you make is new, unless you're copying somebody. <laughs> and that's a little different, but whatever you make, even then it's still a part of you because your hands made it. Um, which is, I think, really need the fact that you can see something and then draw it in your own way. It's always been really fascinating and awesome to me. All right, let's do these little scales here. Ooh. We have to go, okay, we have to go back to the fact that they call these hummingbirds, like a group of hummingbirds, a charm. <laughs> one, I've never seen a group of hummingbirds. I only see one at a time. Um, but two, 
That's got to be the cutest little name for a, for a group of any animal, which is probably pretty fitting for these tiny little birds. A little charm. Ugh, I'm getting kind of... Okay, that's close enough. <laughs> I got a little out of control with those. Okay, let's draw these wings. Ooh. Alright, let's see. Now I've said they flap their wings. They don't technically flap their wings. Like I was saying they flap their wings about 80 times in a second, which is crazy fast. But technically they don't actually flap them. They actually move them in like a figure eight shape. This one's really hard to just explain, so you're gonna have to go have your parents look it up. They have a slow motion um, versions online that you can see of how they actually move their wings. But it's really, really neat, so you might wanna go look that up with your parents. There might even be a little diagram showing you what direction their wings move to fly. That's why they can do such cool things. Like, they can stop immediately, they can fly and go Phoop! And they can flip upside down, they can hover, which is just so cool. Okay, there's that tiny little foot. <laughs> All right, let's do this eyeball over here. There we go. Yeah, they have really good eyesight. They can see farther than humans can. I guess sometimes when you have less senses, like, you know, senses are like your like taste, touch, sight, smell, all those things. When you have, when you lose one, a lot of times the other ones get stronger. So if they don't have the ability to smell, then something's going to be better, and it's their eyesight. Their eyesight's really good. Okay, I think I like that. Now I'm going to probably just go in and make a the beak black here, because that's what I want to do. If you want to color it a different color, you go ahead and do that. But uh, I'm pretty happy with where my little hummingbird is at. I haven't figured out a name. I don't know what the name is yet. So maybe if I do my coloring, I'll figure it out. So right now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna start erasing all of that sketch underneath. So I'll, if you are at this point, go ahead and do that. If not, pause it and catch up. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up after we do our coloring, which is I hope you guys have a really fun time doing it because I know I'm gonna have a lot of fun coloring in all these little areas with lots of bright colors. So, all right, we'll see you right after we color. That was a whole lot of fun, oh my gosh. We gotta do some really cool colors. Now I know that was supposed to be a ruby red on the throat there, but I kinda like that hot pink a little bit better. It, it was, uh, that's what I decided to do and I really liked it. <laughs> so how did yours turn out? I'm really excited to see what you guys did. Like I said, I told you how to, how to share it with me and you guys have been doing a great job of doing that. I'm really excited to see how your flowers turned out on, uh, on where their little beak's gonna go into. And I think that's gonna be a really cool addition to this. I'm really proud of what I made. And of course, when we're proud of what we do, we need to sign our work and let people know that this is ours. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my name right here at the bottom, my initials at least, and uh, call that good. Oh shoot, I just remembered I need to come up with a name. I think I'm gonna call my hummingbird Henry. That's Henry the Hummingbird. <laughs> I like that name. Well, hopefully you had a good time. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Remember, we do this Monday through Friday, every single week. And uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. But also, if you like this video, give it a like. That'll help me be able to do more of uh, more of these videos and, and uh, continue making some more animals. It's been a whole lot of fun. So thank you guys so much. And as always, remember to be brave, be creative, but most importantly, be you. Alrighty, we'll see you guys next time.